that no person on the earth can ever repent <coughs> for what God did for us. Right. Because God loves us so much yeah. that he does not need, he doesn't need a payment. And that he always, that, and that we're so thankful for that because, we, like, God will, because God, yeah, God, God always, because God, God always, since he loves us so much, he, we don't need to, we don't need to pay him, but that our worship, our That's worship right. is what, That's right. is what we, what we, own, what that we, what we, what we pay him. Right. Amen. And why we come to church and we, have, <coughs> and we read the Bible and we accept Jesus. Amen. And that, that is our payment. That is our giving to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Is there someone else that'd like to share something? Mm. Hallelujah. Right. I'm going to give you a, a, a cross. Put him on the chair. Put him on the chair. Get you up there. Can you get up there. There you go. Now we got to see you. Um. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all right. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I'm proud, proud of the fact that he would even come up and try. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I'm going to give you all a cross to take home with you tonight. But I did it because on the back of it, it says, how firmly to faith... When life is racing way too fast, and I'm feeling out of control, though I do not have the answers, there is one who holds fast my soul. He comforts me and cares for me. With his feet firmly planted in place, his love for me is steadfast. He will keep me till I've finished my race. I choose to firmly grasp my faith and hold tightly to his cross. Yeah. I won't give up, shut up, or let up. I will follow my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. When I read that, now, I, the cross doesn't look like the cross. <laughs> but, but it isn't so much what this piece of wood looks like. It's getting a hold of this verse that is written on the back of it. And, uh, you know, uh, if you, if you read the Gospels very carefully about this act of crucifixion, you discover that <coughs> Jesus didn't carry the cross. That a man was taken by the Roman soldiers and he was made to carry the cross for Jesus. And that gentleman was there from a North African city name is Simon of Cyrene. But if you read the book of Romans and you get to chapter 16, you're going to see the names of his sons mentioned. And I thought, how interesting that Roman soldier made Simon carry that cross. But years later in Rome are two of his sons who have left such a landmark testimony for Jesus. You know where it started? When Dad carried the cross. Amen. That's right. That, that's where it started. Because they were there for the celebration of Passover. They weren't there for the cross. It was just another festival that they were attending. But, but, and you know what? There aren't any buts in God. Amen. God could have just as easily enabled his son to carry the cross. But he wanted Simon to do so, so that he would mark his sons and his wife, because Paul writes of them. And he talks about a relationship with his sons and his wife who cooked for him and took care of him. And, and you, you read this in, in Romans, okay? 
But not only in Romans, he talks about the sons, Rufus, over more than once. And just think, if Dad had never been there and didn't carry that cross, his sons' names would have never been in the book. Amen. Think about that for a moment. God has a purpose. There we God go. doesn't do anything casually or accidentally. Now, physically, the feeling is that Jesus was so weak from the beating that he took that he really couldn't carry the cross any farther. But isn't it interesting that out of a whole group of people, they would choose this guy, Simon, from Africa. Think about that. A man by the name of Simon, from North Africa, who happened to be there, probably because he was influenced by some Jewish friends or something. But he had no idea that it, it was not that. <coughs> he was there by the providence of God, so that he could carry that cross. But more important than that, was so that his family would carry what that cross meant to Rome and wherever else Paul was. That's it. That's it. They carried it because Dad carried the cross. Now, just think about things like that. You know, I, I find myself, you know, I know that it's easy to just skip through it all and say Jesus carried the cross. Well, there's only one gospel writer that even says that. The other three don't even mention that. They talk of Simon picking up the cross and carrying it. And it wasn't a choice. A Roman soldier grabbed him, <laughs> and that took away all privilege of choice. <laughs> he carried that cross. But then when you think of the effect of that day carrying that cross, and how it affected his sons, his wife, his family, and how undoubtedly it is felt that he was dead by that time, and that's why Paul only mentions his sons and his wife. But there was something so impacted into their lives. And parents, I want you to understand something. There's nothing more important than how you live a life that impacts your children so that they, they will carry that cross that that will be a privilege to them to realize that God not only saved you, he saved me too. Amen. You know, when we were redoing this building, and you'd have to understand that this is not anything like what it was. But when we were doing it, I spoke to one of the carpenters, a friend of mine, and I said, where can I get somebody to make a cross? And he said, I don't know, but I'll talk to a friend of mine who's in woodworking. So he talked to his friend. Well, his friend came to me and talked to me and I told him what I wanted. I wanted a cross up here. And he said, why? A lot of churches aren't putting up crosses anymore. And I said, I don't care what other churches are doing or Amen. not doing. I want a cross. And so, he, he went to his boss. Now that's Pecky Cypress. Okay, that wood. And it looks to, like it's a solid piece of wood, but it isn't. It's just board. But the man is a craftsman. 